All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, we are back again on the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Another day and another reason for Chelsea fans to be excited about Declan Rice. Um, look, I've talked a lot about Declan Rice uh, during the transfer window um, in, in summer, and I've made my opinion quite clear that he's a very good player, but with that price, it's, it's just a bit unnecessary, in my opinion, um, to buy a defensive midfielder for 100 million. But you can't doubt the fact that this particular player is getting better and better by every game. And he's only 22. So, look, we need to talk about it because Chelsea fans are, again, um, in, in absolute chaotic uh, sort of um, feels this uh, this particular day, tonight. I mean, it's morning at the moment here in Australia. So, um, in, in UK, it's late. And they're absolutely excited about Declan Rice because he's put on another masterclass against Aston Villa. And... Every time Declan Rice does well, Chelsea fans are probably even more boisterous over West Ham fans. Chelsea fans are a lot more excited. I mean, I get it. He's a Chelsea uh, ex-academy player and whatnot. And um, a lot of Chelsea fans like that type of a midfielder. But let's have a look at what he's done against Aston Villa. Let's look at what the fans have been, how the fans have been reacting, what other fans have been saying as well. And let's not forget, there's Conor Gallagher as well. So we do need to think about... I mean, how much do we want to push for Declan Rice? There's Conor Gallagher, who I feel deserves to be um, in the mix of things next season. And not to forget, there are all these other midfielders that we already have. So we're looking to all of that. And also Billy Gilmore as well is still to come back. But they all play different roles. But this is what Statman Dave um, tweeted out. Declan Rice has been directly involved in five goals in his last 10 appearances across all competition, three goals and two assists adding to his game week by week, which is absolutely true and it's facts because he's been banging in goals. He's, he's added goals to his game. This is what he's done in 21-22 season. Premier League, 10 games, one goal, three assists. Europa League, three games, two goals. I mean, we all know defensively he's very sound. We, we know he can do that job. He's, he's good with interceptions, tackling, getting stuck in, pressing and whatnot. He's very good, good with that. What he's added this season is goals, and he's starting to add assists as well, which is incredible. Um, Europa League, he's got a goal against the Nemesis Grape, Rapid Vienna as well. And in the Premier League, he's got a goal against Leicester, and he's captaining the side as well. He's captain of West Ham, which uh, needs to be understood as well. Leeds, he's got a, uh, sorry, he's got an assist against Leicester, assist against Leeds, and a goal and an assist against Aston Villa. He wasn't the captain, so I'm guessing Mark Noble probably would have started in that particular game. But he is the out-and-out -out captain at the moment, as, as Mark Noble is, is more of a sort of rotational sort of player, and it's his last season. So it's it cannot be – we can't hide from the fact that this guy seriously deserves a lot more respect than, than what some of us probably give. There are other Chelsea fans that are absolutely ecstatic about it. This is what Declan Rice's situation is in terms of his profile. 22 years old. He's got 2024, his contract with uh, West Ham, June 30th, 2024, with a club option of one more year. This is why David Moyes is so adamant that this player is £100 million pounds player. In fact, he even goes on to say, I think he said some, sometime this, this particular season, whilst uh, Declan Rice was doing well, that £100 million was a bargain and other teams should have gone after Declan Rice for £100 million. And David Moyes is now saying he's not that that hundred million price tag is no longer available anymore. He's worth more than that now. So it's it's incredible, and we have to say West Ham have been playing brilliantly. Um, their their push in Europe, as you saw, they're doing very well in Europa League and in the in the Premier League. They're fourth now, and they are looking strong. And, and in all honesty, David Moyes is probably one of the managers to play for right now, if you were looking for you know, an outsider, you know, a player from, from different leagues, you'd want to play for West Ham because they are on the rise. They're, they're much better than Spurs, no doubt about that. And I know Arsenal has had a little bit of a resurgence, but West Ham are ahead of Arsenal in, in terms of football quality at the moment, in terms of the philosophy. So West Ham after Chelsea in London are probably the next big thing. And they're now... Yeah, 
properly charging for that top four. Whether they can keep up with it, I don't know. But they've got a team that that that's doing really well. Now, here's the thing. Declan Rice, he essentially plays in a double pivot with Suchek. Um, let me see if I can bring this up just quickly. Because this is the interesting point for Chelsea to now, Chelsea fans as well, to think about what do we what do we do? Um, give me one second. Where is it? Um, can I go over here? Can I go West Ham? There we go. Okay, so I'm going to bring up the lineup. Chelsea fans tend to think he's he's actually a lone DM, but he's not. He plays in a double pivot with Thomas Suchek, as you can see here. Declan Rice, Thomas Suchek, and generally Thomas Suchek is the one that sits back while Declan Rice is acting more as a eight, more as a box-to-box -box somewhat. He's not the one who's sitting deep, lone DM, and then trying to help out the defenders. It's Suchek that's actually doing that. So... Having thought about that caliber of a player, I mean, is it necessary? We do need to start talking about Conor Gallagher, who's been doing so, so well. But before we get into Conor Gallagher, these are some of the stuff that Chelsea, um, you know, football Twitter accounts, large football Twitter accounts, mind you, are talking about. If a player with Declan Rice's attributes and his numbers played in a league that wasn't England, he'd be touted as a 100 million player by Tudor Sport and Marker. He's, a special, he's, he's as special as they come. Not just a good young player, he's one of the best in the league, full stop. I mean, let me know, guys. If Declan Rice played in La Liga or French League uh, or Italian Serie A, like, would he would would fans actually be touting him as a hundred million player? I don't think people are that naive. I mean, he's a good player, but hundred million for a defensive midfielder. That's insane. You would need to have immaculate playmaking ability, great passing ability strong defensively equally and, and be banging in goals after goals after goals assists as well like I, I feel like 100 million for a defensive midfielder that's that's throwing a lot of money when at the end of the day you're really looking at the defensive side of the game attacking is more of a bonus that's not the position that our need is not an eight we've got a lot of eights we've got Kovacic we've got Ruben Loftus cheek Kante is a box-to-box -box as well, albeit he's probably more of a defensive side of things. Um, Saul, let's be honest, he's probably not going to stick around, but he's another one of those options. Ross Barkley is another one probably not going to stick around, but he's another eight. Mason Mount at times can play as an eight. In fact, he is an eight. Um, so there's a lot of options. We don't have a player like Jorginho. That's the miss that we have. And is Declan Rice the answer? I, I don't necessarily think he is. I don't think Declan Rice can play as the deepest midfielder. I know he's done it for England, but at, in England, he doesn't look anything like the way he plays for West Ham. He looks like a shadow of a player. And that may be because Southgate wants him to play that way. But we need a player that can do the Jorginho role, stay deep, build up from the back, one-touch passes, look for key passes going forward, be the connector from defense to offense, not necessarily a goal-scoring midfielder. I mean... We've got that with Ruben Loftus-Cheek. We can chip in with uh, assist these days with Kovacic. He's been doing all five assists this season. He's more progressive. Do we have more slots to perhaps look for a goal-scoring midfielder? Of course we do. Of course we do. And that's why I want to give Conor Gallagher a chance. Conor Gallagher has scored, what, three goals in the Premier League this season. I know you need to bang in more goals, but for me, Conor Gallagher is one that we really need to think about. Let's have a look at what other Chelsea fans are saying. PYS, yet another season of Declan Rice propaganda from Chelsea fans, despite having three world-class midfielders and the resurgence of Ruben Loftus-Cheek. It's, it's true. He goes on to say, if you want Rice, fine. He's a great player. I just personally don't understand signing him with our current midfield. Chelsea fans should agree to disagree to stop being weird. I mean, it's absolutely true. This is what Raf had to say, another Chelsea fan. And his particular um, tweet has actually uh, gone to ESPN. They've actually... Yeah, showcase that. What more does Declan Rice have to do? If he was at a top six club, he'd be getting world-class shouts. I mean, it's incredible. What's this over here? Tuchel revives Chelsea's interest in Declan Rice. Okay, so people are still driving the fact that Tuchel, Thomas Tuchel wants Declan Rice. But bottom line for me, ladies and gentlemen, is that 
I think Declan Rice is a very good player, but I don't know if that's the kind of a player that we need in our midfield. I feel like Conor Gallagher needs to be given an opportunity. His rise has been immense. Ruben Loftus-Cheek has been going great guns. I don't think Kante and Jorginho and Kovacic are going anytime soon. They've probably at least got another two more seasons. And then you do need to think about what happens with Billy Gilmore. So then you've got Saul and ba Ross Barkley who's probably going to move on. Now, you tell me, ladies and gentlemen, is, is Declan Rice worth giving an opportunity or is Conor Gallagher? Because we do need to think about Conor Gallagher. I mean, if we get Declan Rice, forget about Conor Gallagher. He needs to move, move on. He needs to be either sold with a um, <clears throat> buyback clause or whatever the case is. But he's probably not going to be in, in the mix of things if we get Declan Rice, especially with the price of 100 million, which is going to be incredible. So let me know what your thoughts are. If you do want to check out the Conor Gallagher video, we did a Conor Gallagher myself and um, <clears throat> and Kishan. We did a Conor Gallagher video uh, earlier UK time. This is where it is. You can just go to the community page of my um, YouTube um, YouTube site, YouTube page, and then in the community sort of tab, you can find that particular um, information about Conor Gallagher, and there's the link where we did a recent stream on it. So do check that out where we talked a lot about Conor Gallagher. And I want to know from you guys, ladies and gentlemen, what would you choose, Declan Rice or Conor Gallagher? Who would you give the opportunity? Um, and are you happy to buy Declan Rice for 100 million pounds? Or what is the reasonable price for Declan Rice if you do want to buy him? Let me know your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this video, smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, see you.